Welcome. This is a tutorial on subdivision modeling in Cinema 4D. Subdivision modeling used to be called hypernerves modeling before, so maybe you find tutorials on that, that topic too. Uh, let's start with setting it the default color to gray. And if you just look at a cube, what we really need for subdivision modeling is to see the topology of our objects. So I would recommend to go to display grow shading lines. That way we can see better how our objects are subdivided um, concerning their polygons. So now you may ask what is subdivision modeling doing? It's basically there to uh, create organic shapes um, like those guys. I just hold down Alt and click on Hypernerves icon here and that way I can round my cube. Another way of creating that is when I just go back, I can show you, is just by clicking left mouse button here and putting my original geometry underneath the Hypernerves object. After I've done so, I can still modify the underlying geometry and you can already tell quite important effects. For example, I can smooth my cube far enough to make it become a sphere. There are two ways of deactivating the hypernerves effect. One way is by clicking here and the other way is by pressing Q. Now what does hypernerves modeling do? Well, in recent versions it's called subdivision again. So you probably see that if you are using version 15 or later. Let's not care about that. Um, what it's actually doing is it's subdividing the existing geometry and it's cutting through half the length. So if you analyze this, if you just do one cut, then you can see that in the editor every one polygon is now divided into four polygons and they are rounded. So if you look at this edge, this became now subdivided so it goes round. The difference between editor and renderer is obvious. Editor is for you, so you can see what you're doing. And for the renderer, you might be needing a bigger subdivision. So I can do one division in the editor and maybe three in the renderer. And I think the difference is obvious. So once you subdivided your cube, you still may only want to see the original lines you had. And you can do so by going to isoparms. That way, all you see is the original polygons, like those guys. And the more subdivisions you have, the stricter the shape. So if you wanted to have a rounded cube, you could do something like, like this. And then you see that only the edges that are close to this corner count. So it doesn't really matter. The middle lines are not important at the moment. So if you think about it, this could be enough in some cases to create some furniture, for example. But be sure to put all the underlying geometry either 
inside a hierarchy to make it work, or use a null object, put it under the hypernerbs object, and put all the original geometry inside. That way you don't need to nest them inside each other. You can also use instances, put them in there and move them around. So if you change the original, the other guy will follow. If you're going for more complex shapes, you should make sure that you have an extremely simple geometry. The rule is as simple as possible. That's why I very often start with just a polygon. If I put this underneath a hypernerbs, I get this kind of circle. And starting with this, I can select the desired shape. Then I can convert the polygon. And then I start cutting through stuff, maybe like this. And then I can approximate the shape I'm going for, or I'm looking for. And only use as few cuts as possible. If this is close to your desired shape, you can then add more cuts. I would always cut right through the middle once, so you have a symmetrical shape. You can, for example, delete one side and put this polygon object inside a symmetry. What happens now is that this polygon, this half object, is mirrored to the other side. The only thing that is important is, in order to have one piece at the end, is to have all the middle points at location 0. That way the shape keeps in one place, in one piece. If it's moved away from the center, which will happen, happen quite often, then you can just select all the points that should be in the middle and set the position x to 0 and the size to 0. If this doesn't have success, you should deactivate the hypernerves for the time being and repeat that step again. Zero and zero size. This should always work. Afterwards you can activate hypernerbs. In this state you should optimize and make sure you get closer to the desired shape. Maybe you want one more subdivision just to see better what you're doing. And once this is OK, you can go further. For example, you can use beveling, I use MS for that, for creating more detail. Maybe like so. And you should always switch between hypernerbs and the raw version. That way you can make sure there are no edges overlapping and anything remains clean. A good model looks good like with only s without subdivision and looks good with subdivisions. You should always have a topology that only consists of quads. So each polygon should have four sides.
to define the endings better, you should always cut and the closer you cut to this outside edge, the sharper is the edge. So if I cut far away, it will be a very round shape. And if I just go back and cut closer, it will be very strict to the original shape. So maybe next I cut through here and right after cutting I should take the new points and move them to my desired shape. And this is of course much easier if you have very 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 little points. Use the four views using middle mouse button to get closer what you want and you can also switch between just lines with this NG or grow shading lines which is NB. Once I'm happy with the basic shape, I can refine it a little. And only when everything is perfect, then I Break the symmetry by pressing convert here so that I have one object with no mirroring going on and in some cases when I'm not sure if I do anything right I copy this original shape call it orig and I press Alt and click here twice. That way I can block the original so I don't see it anymore and then I can do more experimental stuff like extruding all the polygons at once. So that I have a thickness And don't forget to create caps at this state. And now let's get close at the edge because this edge might be very, very, very soft. That's okay for some kinds of furniture, but I'm very likely to need some subdivisions. Maybe two is okay. Depends. If it's wood, maybe something like this will do. And there we go, we have a chair, sort of. In some cases, I steal polygons from the original, but beforehand we should change something. And you can see that we have a blue color here, which means that all my polygons are turned inwards and I want to switch that and I can do so going UR which says reverse normals. That's the way um, a, an object look, look, should look like. And for aesthetical reasons maybe I should do a cut right through here using UB for selecting all those edges and going MF for cutting through. Then I can give it some more room for sitting.
But now we should make sure to not make a mistake because I only selected the guys at the top. So that way I don't move the bottom ones which I want to. So let's go back, make sure we select the other points too and then move those downwards. And this is why I recommend you to first have a perfect shell and then you should extrude. Otherwise it's more work and there are more uh, mistakes you can make. But now let's go back to the stealing bit. You can select all the polygons here, copy them with UP and that way I have something I can call pillow. I just put it quickly underneath here and I can use this polygons if I want to but I can also shrink them a little by pressing M number. Let's write the thing on top here. Let's see again M M number and that way I can scale the normals in a little. And then I do the same stuff again. Something like this will be good for a little pillow. We can still modify it going from top using the rectangle selection going to point mode and now we should disable only select visible elements because if I just pull the rectangle over those points like this I don't get the bottom pieces. You can see here I missed those when I have only select visible elements deactivated I can select them no problem and pull those points back a little and maybe refine the shape too. By the way, if those arrows are in your way, then just press Alt D and the arrows are gone. And if you need them back, just Alt D again. Okay, that's a very quick way of modeling a chair using subdivisions. There's some more things I can show you. If you're really in a hurry and if you know exactly what you're doing, then you can also subdivide stuff by converting the object, selecting all the polygons and pressing U Shift S and there's an option to subdivide the geometry. You can choose the steps here and just press OK and now you have done the same thing but in a destructible manner. That means if you now go on modeling then you can't just hit a toggle like this and switch between subdivided mode and original mode. Then there's another tip for you. For example, if you um, want to work in more details, you can do the following. Let me just disable this and just work on the base here. Um, if you want to do some seams in here, you can use the subdivided model which looks like this and maybe not don't subdivide it that much maybe one is okay for that and then while having hypernerves activated you press C and then you have the subdivided model editable and then you could for example take this loop here using UL, taking MS for making a bevel operation 
with zero subdivision and all we're gonna do is we select the middle loop by holding down shift and clicking on polygons that way we change the selection from edges to polygons and because this is too much here we can press UK for shrinking it by the way UY is expanding UK is shrinking and then we can extrude this inwards and now we are almost making a mistake because creating caps is still activated. We should disable that and also should have a look at those subdivisions. I don't think we need them now. I put it back inwards and if you want to define this further you can also use that recent selection and go inwards using I and that way you have another loop inside that gap and this will turn out like this if I just hold down alt hypernerbs and decrease the subdivision level then we have a really really nice definition of this edge around here so every time you need little seams for example in your pillow or something you can do stuff like that maybe that's too big so let's just go back and let's use this edge and use I at this stage shrink it down so it's really 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 small and then we co can go inside maybe we try a subdivision now and let's have a look what this looks like yeah that's a much much nicer definition but you should always keep in mind to don't have too dense polygons so maybe we don't yeah it depends on the viewing distance of course but maybe one subdivision is okay because we subdivided the model before maybe one more doesn't hurt but make sure you don't have a model that is all black because of so many lines so just to finish this there's a few more things you should watch out for for example if you have a model like this then you should make sure that you never that you always extrude when you have caps like this but you really should avoid to have something going on like um, this here let me just go back to the original state if you extrude something like this and later on you extrude again something like this you will have a really really bad surprise uh, once you subdivide that just imagine you optimized this thing here you O for optimizing and then this will not behave like expected because you have some kind of stuff inside that model and this should not never happen you should always make sure to delete things like that use MD for closing the structure again so that way you don't have any pinches inside your model apart from that what I just did is really strange because you probably would rather want to go for a structure like that and then extrude it and this is our next problem when extruding you should use a maximum angle which is by more than 90 percent and that way anything stays connected Okay, um, there's a lot more 
to know about subdivision modeling. This is just a very, very basic introduction. Um, I already mentioned you should always have quads in your topology, so don't use any triangles. It will just make your model look a little weird. I just activated the knife with K and go for line. And I can show you what this looks like. If you cut through, through here, you will get some sort of irregularities. It doesn't look really bad now, but there will be many cases where a bad topology of your model will make it look bad. And luckily there's a load, lots of tutorials on subdivision modeling, um, maybe for 3ds Max or other programs where you can learn how to do it. It's really the same in every program. So we select both triangles and press UZ to join them together. And by the way, if you want to make a perfect circle, you should always go for eight sides. So let's just create a disk with eight, eight sides and use NH for seeing the structure. I just remove this and make an inner radius. And if you subdivide this, you will get a perfect circle because it has eight, eight sides. So this is round. If you had like seven or six points here, this circle would be close to perfect. But if you really want to have it perfect, use eight. We can go on from this shape, for example, by converting it using UL and edge mode for the outsides, scaling it up. And then we just select the top part, pressing zero. This part, by the way, we should deactivate hypernerves. No, it doesn't matter in this case, but I had some bad experience with having them on lately. Maybe it's just in version 14. And for example, like this, we could create a more robust shape, maybe a rectangular shape, if we like, by extruding that again. And now that's another problem. If you want to get this straight again, you shouldn't go diagonal inside those corners, but you should actually cut through. So when I have when I want to have rectangular a rectangular shape out of a round one, I would start by cutting through here. Next problem, this works by preset just on selections, so let's disable that. And visible only is interesting too when cutting, not in this case, but you should know about this. This cuts through all the geometry if it's disabled and only on top if you have it enabled. You should try that, it really makes a much big difference. Okay, so let's just cut straight lines here. Didn't work, so I go back, I start here, left mouse button, drag it over and hold down shift. So I have a perfectly straight cut. And now let's disable hypernerves and have a look because it's a little messy. What we want is to have all those points be just one point. So we can use MQ and select the position where we want it. And I can switch between tools using the spacebar. So just press spacebar for rectangular tool and press spacebar again for the weld tool. It works because I had selected it once before. Same with those polygons, just select them because I don't want triangles and I especially don't want a diagonal line inside my corner. So I select them and use UZ each time. 
same here, uz, uz, and we do uz2 here, but I want to show you some more option, namely the tolerance selection. The tolerance selection would work like this. Anything that's slightly touched, even just slightly touched, will be selected. If I don't have a tolerance selection, just the thing I wholly cover. Okay, use it. And now let's look at it again. And you can tell it's much more stable. Because now I even have the option to either uh, optimize this geometry by... Um, cleaning the um, positions so I have a perfect model here like 900 here 900 there um, I can look up here what directions I need this is Z so I can go here and press 900 I can go here and use minus 900 and now let's deactivate hypernerp so I can see it um, in a pure manner. And here I can use 11.00 and 11.00. Of course, I could avoid this kind of cleaning work when working with a grid or with a snapping tool or with an underlying blueprint. You can put in blueprints with Shift V and there in the back you can load in an image. I would especially recommend this if you do really um, work based on a, a real model, then there's lots of blueprints you can get for chairs and other furniture. And now if I want to have really, really, really sharp edges, I can just grab those two um, rings or it's not really rings but parallel lines and using MF for another cut and can try an offset ah, that's not really working in our case so let's just do an MF and cut through it with 50% and then you can select those two lines and use T for scaling and scale them outwards but make sure to not overshoot just go like this and look at it cleanly so it looks okay. You can also use a size number here. It's the X width, so just use 2250 for example. And you can do the same with those parallel lines. Just go MF, 50% is okay. Select those guys and type in in Z any number you like, 250 maybe, or maybe we had 2100, and that will lead to very very sharp edges and you always want a little roundness. If you don't want that roundness, you could just get closer to the edge, but I wouldn't do it, it looks nicer that way. So the rule of thumb is to work really really long inside a flat shape and then if anything is perfect you can do a copy of that for security reasons or just go on like this and that way you can create a shape like so or make it even stricter like this There's some more tips I can give you. For example, if um, you have a very um, kind of uh, sensitive area and it's it's really hard to um, do stuff there without hurting other parts, then I can show you something called a soft selection. I just selected that ring here using UL. And when you go to that arrow and choose a mode for your live selection, you can change from normal to soft selection. And that way you can set a radius here, which will drag the whole stuff around. 
And this is very, very good if you have loads of lines close to each other or just very complex geometry in general. And that way you can at least not break up too much because it always stays connected. And there's many options. Um, like you can use all instead of group. And this is better because it doesn't use just the middle of what you have selected. Like if, if you had group activated, it would just take the center of my current selection and start the radius from there, which is very misleading. If you look at the colors here, all is really gripping to the polygons you, you actually selected. Well, there's a strength. I think that's obvious. That has something to do with when you drag stuff around, I think. Yeah, then it only follows slightly if I decrease the strength value. And there's always there's also a fall off linear or dome. It it changes the shape going away from your selection. Like if I had well we actually need more more polygons here to be able to show you so I just use MF and if I had those guys selected then the different falloffs show clearly what they're good for and you can use needle then it's only the very polygons or you could have used dome then it is more roundish and that's a really interesting option you can al also use spline so you can define the fall off by yourself another hint for advanced modeling uh, would be uh, the modeling axis that's interesting too um, for example if you want to shrink stuff you have those four guys selected but not in soft selection mode but this time in normal mode and say you want to scale them to the bottom edge then you have a hard time at the moment but you can change the modeling axis using the X, Y, Z sliders just slide them Y down and Y means the 100% of Y means from the whole height of your selection 0 would be the middle and minus 100 that's obvious that's the very bottom and then I can go to scale and then I can scale the sky down this of course works for rotation as well yeah okay and another thing that might be interesting if you select stuff like here then um, you might want to for example in in this case might want to move it in a direction that is not shown not like this not this and not this but you want to change either the orientation of the shown axis well world and object will be the same in this case but maybe if you rotate the object around go back to your selection then you may see the difference this is world so this would go up in the direction of the world this uses the local coordinate system of the object because I turned around the object in that direction here then the selection has the same orientation this can be very useful and I sometimes use normals too because that's like the medium direction like the average direction from all the normals going 
away from the polygons. That makes a difference too. And you can also set the location. Like this is world uh, equals object in this case. You can say selected. In most cases select is, is better. But maybe sometimes you want to put an object which is far away and you want to select or move this selection from the world using object coordinates or maybe world coordinates too. In rare cases. Okay, and maybe let's um, have a look at how to model with uh, something in the background. Of course, you can all only use um, background images in top view, right view, and front view, and so on, but not in 3D view. So what we need to do is activating a view we need, for example, the front view. And let's see how we can prepare an image to view it better in the viewport. I wouldn't use it like that. If you have a black and white graphic, you should make sure to invert it. So just go to Photoshop or anything which works similarly. And let's invert it and we create a new layer which should be all red and then we can just use the multiply mode so we have red lines and I save this down this chair to my desktop there you go and now let's go back to cinema and choose the chair that way you have red lines in the background and now when you work on your geometry for example this one then you can really see what you're doing and pull all your lines like where you need them okay there's of course much more to learn about modeling but this should be a good general introduction in hypernips modeling <laughs>